Hey guys, welcome back to the 4x2 Wagon Family Garage. And today we're gonna to be replacing the bearing on my 2016 Toyota Sienna minivan. So I thought I'd share some of the tips and tricks how to get this thing installed. I think under 30 minutes, it's pretty simple. Um, but the other side took me about half an hour, an hour or so, cause uh, well, I didn't know, you know what you don't know. So now I'll share with you guys what I know on this side. So I bought this on Amazon for both sides, about $145 or so. And I'll leave the product description and the part number down below. The reason why I chose this particular knuckle and bearing setup is because it's made by Detroit Axle. Yeah, that's a household name that we can all can trust, I would say. And I've used Detroit Axles on my Jeep Wrangler. And so if it's good for my Jeep, it's good for my Toyota Sienna. So this is a whole assembly, and this is not necessary to buy the whole assembly. You can just purchase the actual hub itself because the hub is where the actual bearing, the race seal, all that is housed inside of here. But the problem is not a lot of us have a hydraulic uh, press to press in the bearings on the back end. So a real easy way to uh, solve for that problem is buy yourself a, this is called a loaded knuckle bearing assembly, which comes with, the, this is the knuckle right here, and the bearing, the hub is all put together in one piece and it makes it really easy to install. Now, some of the symptoms that we're experiencing with the Sienna is when you're driving down the road, it feels like the bearings, as you guys know, the bearings, there's bearings all the way around the hub right here. Uh, it just feels like it's dry or there's a dead spot. And every time the wheel turns, you hear like a thump, th thump, th thump. And the faster you go, the louder it is. Also, you can also jack up to your car and you can uh, grab the tire at the 12 o'clock and the six o'clock and wiggle it. If it moves, you know that the bearing is shot or maybe even at nine o'clock and three o'clock, just kind of shake it. But oftentimes that's not the case. So sometimes you generally hear noises and that's what I'm hearing is noises coming out of my hub. So the easy solution is fix this. I also check my CV axles. I mean, the way I check to see if CV axles going bad is if it's like the boot is torn and I'm leaking oil or, or grease out of the boot and I'm not. So I got to assume that the axle is okay and it's the bearing itself that's in the hub that's causing the noise. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this thing and take it for a test drive and see if it resolves the issue. All right, so let's get started. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 17 millimeter socket and take the brake calipers off. So I'm gonna do my best here to, uh, to not get in the way of the camera, but I think that you guys will get the idea. I can't get a good angle with my breaker bar. So I'm gonna use a 17 millimeter wrench and I'm gonna beat it with a hammer and see if I can knock it loose. There you go. We're gonna take the caliper off the rotor. Okay. And I'm gonna just hang it on my springs and just like that. So I'm gonna take this off so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the ABS sensor I wanted to show you guys. There's a couple clips right here and right here. So you want to disconnect that from your knuckle. And then, again, 10 millimeters. And you want to retain this bolt right here because you're going to reuse it. Okay, and then just pull this off to the side. <clears throat> On the knuckle, there's a little flat spot right here. And this flat spot is for you to bang with a sledgehammer. And what that's gonna do is gonna shock this bolt that's going down into your knuckle. Turn it back the other way. And I'm gonna pull the cotter pin out from the back side so you won't, you won't be able to see that, but it's right here. That's the castle nut that goes on the lower ball joint. You can't take the castle nut off because you can see the axle is in the way. So now what we gotta do is uh, there are three bolts under, under here that holds the knuckle. And if you guys wanted to replace your knuckle, this uh, might be a good time. This is around 40 bucks uh, at most auto parts place. Okay, so normally I would use my impact wrench, but because it's early in the morning, I don't want to piss off my neighbors. So now we're ready to knock off this axle bolt. And again, this is a 30 millimeter and it's a 12 point. All right, here we go. Sorry, neighbors. 
There you go. Mm. Oh, jeez. BFG. There you go. I'm going to replace this guy right here with a new one. Right, we're going to go ahead and slide this hub over the axle. There it goes. So once you get the spline uh, pushed through your hub, just for right now, just put on your axle nut. Just to help you hold it in place. All right, so if you guys done this before, you have a better way of doing this, love to hear thoughts in your comments down in the description. Almost there. This is when you need three hands. There we go. And then for the upper one, just go ahead and pull on the bottom. Just like that. A quick update. I actually took off this dust shield because I want to show you guys uh, what I'm doing down below and with the dust shield on, it was obstructing the, the view. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this lower ball joint on and this goes on pretty easy, uh, which I've learned from the others making mistakes on the other side. So there is a left side and a right side to this thing. It's just slightly small difference. Uh, what I want to show with you guys, what made it really helpful to installing this on the other side is one, so this cotter pin hole right here where the cast nut goes over, um, you do want to make sure you take a little small screwdriver or punch and it's that this hole is facing kind of like this, perpendicular to the vehicle so that when you put the cotter pin in, you can put it this way and you can bend the cotter pin back on the nut. So what you want to do is you want to put the, the ball joint in first through the bottom and then put the nut on Okay, so now you're going to push down on the lower control arm and line up the two bolts and this should slide right in without too much fuss. There you go. Now we can turn the knuckle and put the outer tie rod back on and then finger tighten the castle nut on here for right now. Okay, so that's basically it. Now we're ready to tighten up all of our bolts. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna leave all the torque specs here on the screen. So let's get started with that. So we're gonna torque down the 17 millimeter, two nuts and that one bolt on the bottom of the, the ball joint bracket. And that's 94 foot pounds. And don't forget to put some thread lockers on there. Now, some of you guys might be screaming at me right now for putting red. Uh, there are different strengths of thread lockers. I'm using 271, and to be honest with you, 271 is not what you would call a permanent. Uh, when these things dry, they do dry a little, little bit harder than a blue thread locker, but I like to use red for these kind of uh, nuts and bolts. What are your thoughts on that? Let's hear your comments down below. Okay, now the castle nut that's on top of the ball joint, this is 90 foot pounds, but the problem is you just can't get a, get a torque wrench here because there's just no room. So what I like to do is just uh, get as tight as you can. And, and obviously, uh, you, you know, you want to make sure that you can get your cotter pin through here. This is an interesting cotter pin. That's nice. Okay, and then with these, with these castle nuts, the, one of the most important thing is that if you happen to go past that hole for the cotter pin to go in, do not back off the castle nut. Um, the best thing to do is take the castle nut off, take this ball joint back off, put it back in and retighten it. Because once you back it off, it's loose. Does that make sense? Okay, once the cotter pin is in, just like that. 
Uh, there might be a situation where when you're trying to tighten the cast on that, the actual bolt itself might spin on itself. So if that happens, you want to take a vice grip and hold the bottom of this ball joint right there and then take your 17 millimeter and tighten it. So a little hack for you if that's spinning. Next step here is we're going to put the ABS center back on the, uh, the knuckle. So just take your clip and that clips to your strut mount. It just snaps right in. 10 millimeter bolt. And I don't put thread locks on here. Um, you can if you like to. So with these things, you just wanna go snug and then quarter turn. Uh, these are 155 foot pounds. And again, I'm gonna put some thread lockers on here. All right, we're gonna put a little thread locker on the axle. And this is gonna be 217 foot pounds. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, so let's go uh, put this dust shield back on. Okay, now let's put the brake rulers on. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm gonna get my brake caliper bolts ready by putting some thread lockers on here. And now, if you haven't touched the brakes, uh, your calipers should slide right over, over the rotors. Yeah, just like that. So the torque spec for the caliper is 79 foot pounds. Okay. All right guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video and find it to be helpful in your project. One of the things you guys will need to do after you have installed these loaded knuckle assembly is you'll definitely need to get an alignment done because uh, once you remove that ball joint, it changes the, the angle of your steering. So, you, so just keep that in mind as part of your cost of repairing and doing this project. So if you have any thoughts or questions, please leave your comments down below. And also I'm gonna leave a link down below where you can buy the Detroit Axle Hub and Knuckle Assembly. And that's a product that I would definitely recommend and trust. And if you have any uh, questions, let me know in the comments. Until then, we'll see you guys next video. Thanks for watching and God bless.